Hello and welcome to episode six of the Woolly Badger podcast. Um, it's a bit of a different one today in that rather than showing you what I am working on at the minute, I am going to show you what I was working on like 10 or 12 years ago. Um, a load of my sort of very old knits have recently emerged from our loft and from storage. Um, they've been there for years because we've moved house a couple of times and also I had two children put on three stone. I can't wear them anymore. Um, but I thought it would be nice to show them off because I teach an awful lot of beginners classes these days, like a lot. I am in fact teaching one tonight as I write this, having taught my last one three days ago. And um, I see a lot of people getting very frustrated, very cross that they can't do things instantly and that their knitting does not look like my knitting does. And um, like I'm a professional. I've been knitting for a long time. I was first taught in like 1992, 1993. I knitted on and off for then like, you know, the next 15, 20 years until I seriously, seriously took it up again in about 2011. Um, you know, the stuff I'm going to show you is not bad in the grand scheme of things. I would also argue it's not necessarily good. Perfectly, perfectly acceptable for a relative beginner. But, um, yeah. I made some rookie errors. I made some serious rookie errors. Um, number one, didn't swatch for any of these projects. And you will see on some of them that that really came back to bite me in the ass. Swatching is boring, but swatching is helpful. You do need to do it so that you know it will fit like you like it to and blah, blah. Just swatch. Um, number two, I did not block. I didn't even know what blocking was. I had no idea. Uh, number three, in the words of the great Chesney Hawks, uh, I had high hopes and aspirations. Ideas above my station, maybe. Because there aren't any, like, hats in this. There are any nice, like, simple homewares. What there are, are a lot of cables and weird design choices. So back when I got into knitting again, I was living in a part of southwest London where there weren't really any independent yarn shops. Um, or if there were, I wasn't aware of them. And I also was probably scared of them. I was scared of pretty much everything back then. I had absolutely no confidence in anything at all. Um, least of all in my ability at anything at all. Uh, which was why knitting was quite a good thing because it gave me sort of Oh, measurable progress. Oh, look, I've made this thing. Ooh. Um, anyway, what this means is that I think, I think, I can't quite remember, every single project I'm going to show you today is from a Rowan book. Because what there was near me was a John Lewis. And John Lewis have Rowan books and Rowan yarns and all of that. And what I did was I went in and I bought the pattern books and I bought exactly the yarn the pattern book told me to buy. I bought exactly the needles the pattern book had written in it. As I said, didn't swatch, just knitted with the needles they said. And um, I don't think I even often varied the colour or anything like that because I was totally, totally convinced that if I did anything other than exactly what was written in the pattern, it would go wrong. Did not trust myself in any way to make any alterations. Um, Quite obviously, I have since learnt that, like, it's knitting. The worst thing that's going to happen is you get a weird ball of, like, tangles. But still. Um, so, yes, these are all, I think, Rowan patterns. I'm not going to tag the designers or the patterns or anything like that because, frankly, I have not done them justice. <laughs> also, there are a lot of, like, I think they're all seamed patterns. And I, I hate seamed patterns. I'm not sure why I persisted for so long. Oh, no, I am sure. I was scared of Ravelry. Yeah, I don't know how you can be scared of Ravelry, but I was scared of Ravelry. Um, obviously, it has since had its issues with accessibility and things like that, but this was long, long before any of that. Um, and I just did not trust myself to find a good pattern on there. I thought I would just come up with weird rubbish, and so I had to go for stuff that was, you know... It's in John Lewis. John Lewis is terribly, terribly British and terribly proper. It would be fine. 
So yes, that is the background to what I'm about to show you. Shall we begin? So, project one. We ready? What do we think it is? I've already said not a hat. Um, it wasn't a simple jumper. It wasn't mittens. It wasn't a cow. It was whatever the hell this is. What is it? What? What is this? I think, I think, from the vague memories of the pattern book, it was designed to be a sort of floaty, open front, waterfall cardigan-y thing. But I obviously did not swatch. I did not swatch. And so uh, the fabric is a bit too dense to be doing any floaty waterfalling. Um, I remember that I selected it because I was scared of anything that involved shaping. And by shaping, I mean increasing and decreasing. Basically, I was scared of a knit two together. And yet I was not scared of cables. That makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. And look at it. Look at it. It is enormous. It's basically a scarf with two funny holes in. In fact, I could probably repurpose it by using those funny holes like that. I may in fact suggest my husband does that. He's six foot four, he could probably pull that off. Um, these funny holes have still got the working yarn sort of running between them because I seem to remember the pattern said, said do not cut yarn and I looked at it at the time and thought that doesn't seem correct but um, I left it. Still there, like 12 years later. <laughs> Odd choice. Um, the actual knitting though, I've got to say, I've not done a bad job on this. Um, I would never, ever, 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 ever choose to knit this now. I mean, look at that moss stitch. There's so much of it. There is one little bit here where I went a bit awry and accidentally went into rib, but like, not bad, I would say. Um, if I had to give this a score, I would probably go somewhere in the C plus B minus range. Like, it's a good colour. I've done a decent job on the cabling. Um, but it's just a weird ass choice of something to knit. Really weird. I don't think I, I think I literally have never worn this. Not even when I finished it. Um, I was so sick of the sight of it. I remember it took me about seven months that by the time I finished it, I just never wanted to see it again. And indeed, as you can probably see by the sort of cat fur and stuff on it, it has just been buried in a wardrobe since. So that was project number one. <laughs> project number two. Oh, project number two. You're a beauty. Are we ready? I talk about project number two quite a lot when I talk, when I teach sweater school, um, because it was my first attempt at an actual proper garment. And it is this. It was from the same book, I seem to recall. A big sleeveless cardigan. Now, on first glance, it looks not bad. Yes, it is a little bit felted now because I did not really understand how to care for knitwear and obviously just shoved it in the washing machine in my rented flat, which was not a washing machine that should have been trusted. Um, but on closer inspection, it's a bit. It's a bit sketchy. Let us begin with the collar. You can't see now because they have felted clothes, but I didn't understand short rows. There used to be enormous holes along here where I had just failed entirely to do anything and had just turned back and started knitting again. Then there is the shape of the collar itself. I did not pick up anywhere near enough stitches on this. Anywhere near. I mean, looking at it, my pickup rate seems to be about Somewhere in the realm of um, one stitch in every three. That's not going to work. So it's misshapen. It never folded over properly. It was weird. It's also covered in cat fur. So I'm going to just pause this and sneeze. Fun fact, despite being a cat owner, I am allergic to cats. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes. This, again, on my cabling kick, 
I remember picking it because it didn't have sleeves and I thought that would make it quick to knit. It is enormous. It was not quick to knit. Um, it only had a little bit of shaping here. It was worked from the bottom up in pieces and seamed, which I did a kind of decent but a bit lumpen job on. Um, but when you look closer, it's a bit... Hmm. So, on this side, we have two by two rib. On the back, we have two by two rib. On the front, we have one by one rib. And if you look closely, it is also twisted rib, which was absolutely not deliberate. I just used to knit all of my stitches through the back loop. Did not know that was not how you were meant to do them. Um, then we have the bubbles, the bubbles. I remember these bubbles were the bane of my existence, which presumably is why I just forgot to knit a lot of them. There should be a bubble there. There's no bubble. Uh, there should be a bubble here. There's no bubble. Um, there's things like that all over it. There are then absolutely no bubbles from this point upwards, which I guess may have been a design feature because presumably if you'd picked up the right number of stitches, your collar was going to fall over those, so why waste the time knitting the bubbles? But my collar never fell. It looked like I'd just stopped. Um, yeah, it was, you know, a thing. I wore it a lot, I have to say. I was extremely, extremely proud of it. And I think for like somebody who'd been knitting, well, seriously knitting in the sort of seven months it took me to knit that weird blue thing, for this to be next project, like, not bad. Not bad at all. Even with all the, like, missing bubbles. Actually, there that's, Oh, yeah, there's one missing there. <laughs> um, I am going to give this... I'm going to give it a B-. minus. I'm going to give it a B-. minus. You know, obviously, problems. But I think the sheer ambition of it the sheer ambition of it needs to be recognised. It's time for the next project. <laughs> the next project is a doozy. Are we ready? This is why, you know, if ever you find yourself wanting to ask the question, why should I, why should I swatch? Why is that important? Please, please think of this project. And remember, this is why you swatch. What is this? What, what is this arm? What is this? What? It is like, oh my gosh. The, what? So here is what I remember about this project. It was from a book of linen knits. And in the book, it was a very nice kind of twist front, drapey, summery cover up. It is drapey. It is twist fronted, but it is the most misshapen, weird ass thing I have ever seen. Um, this was my first project knitting with linen. And I remember at the time thinking that it felt really weird and like I was knitting with rope and surely I was doing this completely, completely wrong. Um, linen does feel very strange compared to wool, if you're not used to it. It's not got the elasticity of wool. So it just sort of has no give in it and it's, um, yeah, it's a different experience, but it is also normally lovely once it is washed. It just keeps wa softening up and becoming lovelier and lovelier with every wear. This, I mean, this is just, this is terrible. Um, for a start, these arms, I think, are legitimately, yes, they are in fact as long as my legs. <laughs> so, you know, that's one thing. They are quite a lot thinner than my legs. Now, I, of course, never blocked this out. I never blocked it out. Um, when I did eventually wash it, I believe I left it in a pile and just to dry then. And so it sort of blocked itself into this. I remember what I did. I hang it up. The arms stretched down. They went like this. It, yeah. There we go. Um, even before that, it was nowhere near the right size. So bear in mind, when I knitted this, I was about a size 12. I am now about a size 18. Yeah. I mean, I... Should I try and put it on? That might be funny. Uh, oh, I clearly did not know about stretchy bind-offs. Wow, that is... That is snug. Oh. 
There's every chance I'm gonna have to cut myself out of this. Right, oh, look. Terrible, terrible sewing in events. Uh, ooh. Oh dear. Oh yeah, there's no, there's no way in, look how scrunched up that is. There is no way in hell that, I think I've got a photo of me wearing this holding my friend's daughter who was born in 2014. There is no way in hell that 2014 me, who was considerably smaller than 2023 me, there's no way this fitted her. There's no way. I mean, I suppose. What a look. The, um, the lace repeats are at least, as far as I can tell, mostly correct, but yeah. I don't think this one will be getting worn again. So now that I have freed myself from this, I suppose I should give it a grade. Like, I wanna give myself points for knitting the lace correctly, but the fact is I didn't do it correctly because I didn't block it. I didn't do it correctly because I didn't swatch it. I evidently completely lost the plot when it came to the arms and just, I think it's gotta be an F, hasn't it? It could have been really good. It could have been, but alas, instead, it is not. So we are now up to about 2014, 2015, um, and we have my first adventure into mohair. Now, because I was apparently very daft, is probably the polite way to put it. Um, it's not like mohair held with something or anything like that. No, no, I knitted single ply mohair on what I seem to recall were absolutely blooming tiny needles. I mean, looking at these stitches, they're like, oh, probably won't be able to see. They are tiny tiny. Uh, I think it was like a two and a half millimetre needle or something appallingly small like that. You know, first glance, I'd say that's, that's a pretty good job. That's not bad at all. It's got the uh, nice little bell sleeve on it. Uh, I even, I, I was always really terrible at sewing in set in sleeves. I made them poofy and rubbish. Um, but thankfully the evidence of that has uh, been gifted to my husband. <laughs> so he has to put up with those. Um, again, it was all fully seamed and sewn together. And I would absolutely never knit this project now just because like, why? Why would you knit mohair on two point something millimetre needles in pieces and then sew it together? Why would you do that? It's okay. I had clearly got to grips with shaping. We've got a little bit of a kick out there. But alas, what lets it down? Right here on the front. The lace there, working. <laughs> Looking very nice. And then we get along here and... Oh no, it's... It's gone wrong. Those aren't diamonds. Those are sort of funny wadges. Um, I still, I just, I hadn't quite got to grips with lace knitting at that point in time. Um, I was getting there-ish, but you know, I managed it there and there. And I remember this being like one of the first projects where I was like, oh no, I've nailed that lace. So close, so close. Um, I am in fact gonna give this an A minus. I think it's uh, not bad at all. Well done. Well done. Past me. Um, can I get into it? It used to have a lot of positive ease on it. Um, it will be a challenge to... Ooh. Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is now a cropped, quite fitted top. But, you know, maybe... Maybe I'll bring it back into rotation. I might actually wear this one. So we are back onto the last of the recently rediscovered projects and clearly it took me a little while to recover from that linen lace monstrosity. Uh, but I did and I went back and knitted this. It is a summer cardigan cover up. Um, this one's more successful than its mate. I will give it that, but I would say that is more through luck than judgment. Uh, for a start, sleeves are sort of 
normal person arm length sleeves. They were supposed to be three quarter length. Um, this was supposed to be the sort of length that kind of hits at sort of, well, bum level really. Um, whereas this is a, you know, it's more of a long line cardigan. I did not have an understanding of how lace, once worked, opens up and grows an awful lot. So I was sort of knitting it to length pre-blocked. Um, I, I'm not sure if I blocked this. This lace on the back makes me think I may have done. That looks not bad at all. And indeed, the actual lace patterning in it is correct the whole way through. I remember being freaked out by this at the time because the right, it's one of those ones where the right side is the wrong side and um, the sort of funny lines on the garter panels freaked me out. Um, it was one of my earliest lessons in trust the process, let it settle in and then judge. Um, I do also remember it being very weird because the back neck was only like that many stitches, uh, but you know, I did wear this for a while. And look, is that a, nope. Oh, that's not comfortable. Oh, <laughs> I just tried to pull that around and basically reverse garroted myself. I'm not sure you can garrot yourself from the back, but I tried. It was also obviously far too small. Um, yeah. I remember at the time wearing this and thinking, it's just not quite how I want it. Uh, I'm gonna give it, um, oh, let's see. The lace is correct. The color placement are co is correct. I cocked up the sizing a bit with the length, but I didn't do it properly. Let's go. Do, do, do. A solid B. It's all right. I think most people would look at it and go, Ugh. and I'm sure that back in 2015 when I knitted it, it was nowhere near as reverse garroting because there was less of me to go around. But still, could have done better. And I feel like by 2015, should have done better. So with that, I am going to go and take one hell of an antihistamine. Um, I had some of these in the bottom of my wardrobe. My cats clearly just slept on them for years. But before I do, I want to just show you what I am currently working on. I have definitely mentioned the yarn for this before. I'm not sure if I've shown the actual project yet. Um, Ursina by Jacqueline Cieslack. This is so lovely. So I am knitting it in Bird Street yarn sport weight. It is going to be cropped because I want it to wear over dresses. So, you know, gone for that. Um, it's my first foray into anything brioche and oh, it's so fun. I don't understand why brioche is so fun and rib is so not. Anyway, I'm um, hoping to have this finished fairly soon because it is good. And then I might knit one of the ones in worsted weight. Um, but before I do that, I have got the yarn for a summer jimmy jab. I am planning a lightweight t-shirt version, slightly wider neckline. Um, yeah, maybe a slight A-line shape to it. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but... This is, uh, come on, focus in. This is Camo Rose, Organic Summer Wool, one of my favourite summer yarns. It's a uh, wool and cotton. And this is Revenant's Chimera. That is going to be the contrast colour work that isn't really colour work. It's mosaic knitting, slip stitches. So the kind of colour work that works in summer because it is not multi-layered. That is the main colour. I have swatched. I have swatched. I'm going to cast on very soon. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me for that quick canter through some of my uh, past projects. I think there are probably going to be more appearing soon. So that's certainly not everything I knitted up to 2015. Um, so yes, let me know if you would like to see more. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you soon. Thanks!